Hey friends, welcome to the first video of the year. I'm really excited about this new season of Dev Tips, and I just, I can't contain myself. You may have noticed the uh, new branding and the new motion work that we, the, yeah. You may have noticed the new branding on the channel. So that's real fun. Big shout out to Hagrid for helping me on the motion work. So I've been thinking long and hard about what I wanted to share with you guys for the first video of the year. And actually right in the middle of making another video about CSS positioning, and I'll finish that and share it with you guys later on, but I had the idea and I had the inspiration that I wanted to share with you my kind of workflow. Uh, it came to me that I wanted to share some fundamental tips about my workflow and coding environment. Now there's a million ways to do this, but I think it'd be cool to start the year like this so that you guys don't be confused later on when I start showing you tools and things that I use. You'll already know how I organize my, my stuff. So to start things off today, I want to talk to you guys about SAS. Now I touched on it a little bit in the last uh, CSS preprocessor video when I, talk, I discussed uh, what this and things like it are for, but today I want to show you guys how I use it in my everyday work. Before you write any SAS code, you need to have a way to process the code that you write into CSS. And you can do that in two main ways. The first way is via the command line. Now I do that sometimes depending on the types of work that I'm doing, but for now I just want to show you how to use a desktop application to process your SAS. There's quite a few applications like this, but I use CodeKit to process my SAS. I really like CodeKit. CodeKit can do a lot of things, but let's look at how it can compile SAS into CSS. This is my projects folder. Notice it has a CSS folder. So inside the CSS folder, I'm going to make a style.sass file. Then I open CodeKit and just drop my project into it. CodeKit looks in my project and finds all the SAS files. I can select this SAS file and tell it where I'd like it to spit out the compiled CSS. Right now it's pointing to the CSS folder, so that's fine for me. I'll just leave it where it is. I need to make sure that I link the CSS file that CodeKit creates in my HTML head. That's it, I'm ready to go. CodeKit will output a new CSS file every time I make a change to my SAS file. And as an added bonus, CodeKit itself will refresh my browser so I don't have to. Okay, I'm going to quickly create a tweet style layout that we can use as an example. Here it goes, that's my tweet layout example. We got tweets here and style there. I already got my HTML that I wrote earlier. And I'm styling it up with some SAS that's compiling the CSS. Look at these tweets, they're so tweet-tacular. Ta-da! Cool, the example is set up. Now let's jump back into that SAS file and I'll show you what I've done and how it's kind of organized the way I like it. And I can show you some features of SAS. I mentioned in that other video that I prefer the indented flavor of SAS. I like it a lot better. I really don't understand why the bracketed one is more popular. It blows my mind. Now this code is nested. You can see that I'm referencing child elements here and they output complete selectors in the compiled CSS. Nesting is a great way to keep in mind relationships when you're writing selectors. And also it really helps to cut down on repetition. Okay, here's another feature. SAS lets me use variables to keep a few constant things straight. So in this example, there are two text colors, black and this light gray. To make things easy, I can throw that gray into a variable up top and then just call it whenever I want that muted gray text style. It's really, really handy to have all those colors in variables so that when you need them, you don't need to fuss with all the hex codes. If I had to choose only one feature to take with me on a desert island of SAS, it would be imports, for sure. SAS builds on top of the current CSS imports, but instead of requiring an HTTP request, SAS will take the file that you want to import and combine it with the file you're importing it into so that you have a single CSS file that you're serving to the web browser. Now this is a really small project, but you can still see how it works. 
Let's say I want to isolate all of those variables that I just made into their own document. I can create a new .sass file called vars and pop those variables in there and save. Next, I write import vars at the top of the main style page. Now that vars.sass file will be pulled into the style document before it is compiled. When I start doing this, I usually make a file that is a directory or an import file, meaning that its sole purpose is to collect the various SAS documents and order them into an output file. If I wanted to do that here, I would move all the styles into their own documents and then only have imports here. This acts as a table of contents kind of thing and it makes organizing larger projects much, much easier. In fact, I often extend this idea and further separate those files into subdirectories. So I'll have one for like base and modules and layouts and mobile. And uh, this way it's really easy to find what I'm looking for and you know, get to work on that stuff. At work I have 114 SAS files that compile down to one single CSS file. That's one HTTP request and that makes me very happy. Now there's a lot more of course, but these three things will put you on a pretty good path to using SAS in a meaningful way. For more examples and explanations of features, check out SAS's website at sas-lang.com guide. I'll put that link in the bottom there. Okay, great, so that's a little bit more about how I use SAS and like the environment that I code it in and maybe there's a few other things I can talk about along the way about the coding environment that I use but I really wanted to show you SAS first because I, like I said I use that indented flavor of SAS and it might just kind of like make your mind explode if you're not aware of what I'm doing and now that I've shown it to you I'm going to be using it in every video from now on because after I've been using SAS for so long uh, I just I feel so clumsy with regular uh, old CSS so that's one big reason for me to give this to you as the first video of the year thanks for watching you guys we did it first video of the year under our belts just under it I don't know what they're doing under the belts they're just under the belts Anyway, we also uh, sorted out, right before the end of the year, we finished one of the, one of the best uh, kind of series that we made so far. So check them out. We've got uh, HTML5 basics here you can take a look at. There's, I think, seven or eight videos about just fundamentally what is HTML to somebody who's never heard of it before or used it before. Then we got CSS basics, which is the one we just uh, finished up seven videos and take you through the fundamentals of understanding conceptually what CSS is about and linking a lot of core concepts together. And then, and then even more fundamentally than that, I got um, how the internet works down here, which is only three videos, but it's kind of loopy. I do a lot of drawing and a lot of, like, there's some cupcakes in the, so these are all playlists and you should go and watch all of the videos in those playlists so that you can become an export, an export, an expert, uh, website maker. And if you have not yet, of course, you really need to subscribe to this channel. That's this button down here below. What do you guys think about this like layout here that I'm trying out? It's called an end card. I don't know, YouTube. Okay guys, this is DevTips, new videos every Monday and I often sprinkle them in between throughout the week. And uh, love you so much. Bye, bye, bye. Mwah.